Ooh. All right, geometry, we are on lesson 3-3 three -three today. Today's date is Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Um, oh, I can't see people there. I can see people now. Our objective for the day is to do what? Make sure you have your cameras on too, please. Yes, Asha. Find angles in congruent triangles and find angles in isosceles triangles. There it is. And isosceles is a fun word to spell. It's S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E um, yeah, so vocab. Um, congruency statements. These are, I want to review these because sometimes Khan Academy or me, um, I'll, I'll throw these in here just to, <laughs> as a trick question. So make sure that you're listing points in the correct order. Um, with triangles, it's especially tricky. Um, with longer shapes, it's pretty clear that things are in wrong orders. But it's just making sure that you list letters in the correct order and making sure that um, the first point that you list is congruent to the first point that you list for the second shape. So I'll show you what that means with an example. And a congruency statement, there's not just one answer. I can write quite a few answers. Um, let's, let's, I'll, I'll give you an example of one. So first, I, want, I basically want my, my goal, go away. My goal here is to say, these two triangles are congruent. How do I say that with a formal math way of writing? So I can say triangle, and I'm just gonna randomly pick, um, I'm just gonna say ABC because that's how the alphabet works, but it doesn't have to be ABC. I could have done BAC, CAB, um, any order that I really want. So I'm gonna say triangle ABC, and then here's a cool little symbol for you. It's an equal to sign with a little squiggly above it. What does this mean? This symbol here means congruent. Congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to, and I have to be very, very specific now. I need to say triangle, well, which angle looks like A? A looked like that kind of bigger, maybe a, it looks like an obtuse angle. So I cannot say S, I cannot say Z. I have to 100% say P. It has to start with a P. And then it goes to B. Okay, so B is this angle up here. And you can see that's kind of the medium angle. It's not the super sharp one. It's not the obtuse one. So I have to say S next. So P, S, and then finally Z or Z if you're in college, right? That's how you write a congruency statement, and it has to be in the correct order. But then you can choose a random one over here. So let's do triangle, I don't know, BAC. Can someone help me write a congruency statement if I had said triangle BAC? I see one hand, two hands, three hands. Charles, go for it. Would it be SPZ? It is indeed SPZ. Um, someone give me another congruency statement. Um, Ulysses, go for it. Uh, CBA. CBA is congruent to what would that be, Ulysses, if you're going to give the, the second part of it? Uh, ZSP. ZSP, nice. Uh, what's another congruency statement? So I want to do another one. Um, Kira? It could go C A B, um, and that would be Z P S. Yes, nice. And there is one. Actually, there's two more that you could do. Um, I, I think we'll call it good. I think you guys kind of get the gist of it. It needs to be in a very specific order. So that's how you write congruency statements. All right, let's move on to example number two. What is the value of the X in the figure shown below? And this is exactly what your homework's gonna look like. Um, yeah, how do we use triangles here to figure out what's going on? And the, the way that you need to be thinking about these conceptually, I know that this type of question is really asking you a lower level question. It's not asking you the why. The why is like that, that pinnacle that geometry will ask you, why is that? equal to that number. This is asking you to find the number. So you don't have to prove like, well, these two triangles are congruent by a uh, side angle side. And this one is actually angle side side. And then because those are congruent, you can discover X and then Y and B. That's coming up. I eventually will want you to prove it. For now, it's that low level. How do you find X? And if you want to just eyeball it, you might be able to do it that way. Just be careful. Any ideas on how to start example two?
Yeah, Kira? Um, well, I think like if you did a reflection of the like upper triangle um, onto the lower triangle, you would see that like 32 degrees. I don't think C would match up right onto B. Maybe it would, but. No, I agree. Yeah, if you did a reflection over line A, D, C would not map onto B. It would come down to like right about there. Yeah. And then you know that like 32 degrees is not equal to X, I think. I 100% agree with that. X is not equal to 32. Okay. Yep. But I can tell you this, these two triangles are congruent. They're just not with a reflection, maybe with some other transformation. But what theorem could you say that they're congruent by? Because I only have two sides, it looks like 79, I only have a 13. What, what theorem could you use here? I have 7, 9, 13, 7, 9, 13. What theorem is that? Charles? Uh, side, side, side. It is, yeah, I have three sides, so side, side, side. So these triangles are congruent, which means um, this angle right here must be the angle in between seven and 13. Well, in between seven and 13 is this angle over here. So what I'm trying to get at is the order matters. It has to be between seven, 13, not between seven and nine or nine and 13. If you look at this bottom triangle, ABD, ABD, this bottom triangle between seven and 13 lies the angle X that we're trying to find. And between seven and 13 on triangle ACD is the angle 41. So there's a lot of math and logic that goes in there, but you can say, yeah, X is equal to 41 degrees. So then that would mean that the 32 degrees would also be on the other side as well. Yeah, 32 degrees would be angle BDA down here. This would be 32 degrees. Exactly. Yeah, Asha, question? So like, so you couldn't, so what I thought, so the way I figured out that X was 41 was was not that way, but I want to know if the way that I did it was totally wrong. Okay. So like Kira said, like, so you couldn't reflect over line AD, right? Right. And so, and so, Obviously, 32 wasn't that angle, but if those two triangles were congruent, then that then X would have to be 41. Would have to be 41 degrees. But will that work every time if I do that? For triangles, um, yes, if you're really good at eyeballing it, but um, purposely um, on some questions that I've seen, not on Khan Academy, but on the SAT, they purposely draw triangles not to scale where you can't just eyeball it. Right, because I guess you wouldn't know, you you couldn't know if they're congruent if you didn't know, like you can't eyeball that, so. Exactly, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. So I'll write this down for our notes too. How do we know these two triangles were congruent? It's because of side, side, side. Um, and then you can actually use the congruency statement too to say, okay, well, it goes from B to A to D. So angle A, angle A must be angle D because they're the first two letters that are written. So if you write the congruency statement correctly, which I should have made you guys do, my bad. Um, you can actually just say, okay, well, that means angle D is the same thing as angle A. You can say angle B is the same thing as angle C. You can use the congruency statement to figure out what the angles are. You can say side length BD must be the same length as side length CA. The congruency statement is super, super useful. Uh, let's do example number three. Again, try to find X. Uh, try to find the value of x. Um, guess what? This whole unit is about congruency, so these triangles are congruent. That's the, the what, but let's talk about the why. Why are these two triangles congruent? By what theorem can you use? Jade? Angle, angle, side. So I see angle, angle, side. Yep, looks good. And then, uh oh, this other one. I don't have any side. angles. All the angles are gone. Side, side, side. 
Ah, yeah. So five, ten, thirteen, five, ten, thirteen. Yes. So by side, 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 they are congruent. Um, thank you. And then I'll I'll go ahead and write the conclusion because of side, side, side. But what is the congruency statement? Triangle blank is congruent to triangle what? Who can write the congruency st statement for these two triangles? I like to get more new people in. I feel like I'm always calling them Charles, Kira, and Asha. Yeah, Ulysses, I've only called on you once so far. Is it like A, B, C is equal to E, D or E, B, D? E, E, D, yeah, nice. So we have the con uh, correct congruency statement. Um, so let's actually figure out what the angle of X is. And um, angle of X corresponds to this angle A, which means if I circle the congruency statement, A and E. So I'm looking at E. Ah, darn it, there's no angle there. So how do I figure out what this angle of E is? Bunch of hands again. I'm gonna call on people I don't typically call on. I've only heard from Jade once. Let's go for Jade again. Okay, so each triangle has an a full measure of 180. So we can add 109 and 48 and get the remainder. Yeah. 157. Oh, thank you. 157. Um, and what do I need to add to this in order to get it to the sum of the interior angles of a triangle to get this to 180? 23. 23. There it is. All right. So this angle must be 23 degrees and boom, x is equal to 23 degrees. There it is. And I can't emphasize enough. Yes, if you just showed this, these two triangles and said solve for x and people had no idea about side, side, side congruency theorems, people would still probably be able to get 23. I really care mostly in this class, why? Why is that working? You need to know the, the side, side, side. All right. Um, fist of five on the first three examples. Let me zoom out here. In Five, five, four, three, five, four, four. All right. Let's move on to the second half of our objective, isosceles triangles. Zoom, enhance, go. Um, let's define it. Um, it's triangles whose base angles are congruent. So I'll write down here, base angles. It's this vocab word. These two angles down here, I'm calling the base angles. Right there and right there. Um, and they have two congruent sides whose, um, and just write down two, two congruent sides opposite to those angles. So opposite means all the way across, opposite means all the way across. So this side and this side are congruent. I don't have to have those arrows there, I guess now. Um, these two sides are congruent. So typically when you see an isosceles triangle, like a textbook, they just have this notation. Those two are equal, those two are equal, the end. All right, let's move on to example four. You know that. Um, find the value of X in the triangle shown below. And that looks a little bit hard. So again, I care about the Y. Is this an isosceles triangle? That's kind of the, the main question here. And if either one of these two facts are shown, if the base angles are congruent, boom, you have an isosceles triangle, done. If you have two congruent sides, boom, you have an isosceles triangle. So why is this an isosceles triangle? It, it is because it's in this section, but why? Charles? Because the two sides are the same and also the two angles are the same if you were to measure them. Mm, yeah, well, Wait. Again, it might not be drawn to scale, but I agree. They, they are going to be the same because these two sides are the same. So that's the, the main thing that you said. The first part was perfect. So, and then you do some math. So Charles said that they, oh yeah, question. Could yeah, you please ahead. scroll back up to the definition of isosceles? Just... Yeah, and I'll actually scroll it so you can see it as I work on example four. Thank you. So as Charles said, yeah, those two sides are congruent, which means these two base angles must be congruent. I can label that 64 degrees. And just like before, the sum of interior angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. It is another theorem. Um, so you can say, okay, X degrees plus 64 degrees plus 64 degrees must add, oh, that's a weird degree symbol, must add up to 180 degrees. This is like the formal way of doing it. Um, 
the method up here that Jay did is it's perfect. It's logical. I love it. Uh, this is the formal way of doing it. You have to say, yeah, add those three angles up. You get 180 degrees. You don't have to do it this way. Not yet. Um, and then you, you solve, you see, say, okay, 64 plus 64. Ah, I need help. Someone help me solve this. What do I do? Come on, let's get some new people in here. I haven't talked to Hazi, Ugo, or Emma yet today. I only got a few problems left. Let's get them in here. Come on, Ugo, you got this. Uh, what am I supposed to do again? What is 64 plus 64? Oh. Um. 128. 128. I'm going to drop the degree symbols because I'm going to be lazy. X plus 128 is equal to 180. Ugo, what do I do from there? Um, you find how much more, like to 180? Yeah, sure. What is that? Um, 52. 52. So let's say X here is equal to. 52 degrees. Done. Box it. The end. Wait, so you, what did you do to get to 52? You div We subtracted 128 from both sides. So I can say okay. 180 minus 128, just to verify Ugo's math. It is indeed 52. Okay. Ugo's way of thinking about it was a little bit different. Like how much more do I need to add to 128 to get to 180, which is the same question as saying, what's 180 minus 128? And if I'm being super, super formal about this, it's not 52 degrees because the degrees has already been accounted for by putting the degree symbol there. So it's really just 52. If I plug 52 in for X, then it turns into 52 degrees. This, the, the units are already there for us. But again, I don't think most people care about that. Um, is the definition copy down? Uh, okay, up here, here, can I scroll down? All right, perfect. Sorry about scrolling down too early. Uh, example number five. Okay, why is this an isosceles triangle? It's the same thing as before. Charles said it's 10 and 10. I'm just gonna use his definition again. If those are 10 and 10, then these base angles must be the same. This base angle must also be X degrees. X degrees, X degrees, and 94 degrees. But how do I do this now? It's different from the last time. Help me, help me. So we don't add 10 this time? Um, we don't add 10 this time. We didn't really add 10 last time. We did say that we use the 10 and the 10 to say this is indeed an isosceles triangle. That's the why behind what we're doing, the reason that we're okay. saying, yes, this base angle should also be X. So I want to talk to either Emma or Ulysses. No, not Ulysses. Sorry, Haziel, that person that I can't see down there in the camera. Um, what do I do? How do I say add these three things up and set it equal to 180? Because if I add those interior angles up, I should get 180 degrees. What do I write down for my equation? It's gonna be one of you two. All right, Emma, I'm choosing you. Just tell me 94 and then just plus and then just write the rest of the stuff. 94 plus? 10 plus 10, right? Not quite, just do the angles, the interior angles. So then 94 plus X. Keep going. Plus X again? Plus X, yep. And then all those angles should add up to? 96, no? The interior angles of a triangle always add up to this one number and it's always? Oh, 180. Like, 180. Okay. 180 degrees technically, but yeah, 180. So Emma has made our equation and now it's time for Hazi to show up and save the day. Solve this equation, Hazi. Um, first simplify, what is X plus X, Hazi? How many of those do we have? We have two X's. You do indeed have two X's. So I'll simplify this for us. And finally, help us solve the rest of this, Hazi. You got this, go for it. Well, 
we subtract right now 94 from 180. Yep, minus 94, minus 94. You get now just 2x by itself on the left-hand side. So 180 minus just a normal 90 would have been 90, but I have to subtract another four more. So go down another oops, another four more and get 86. And then from there, I'm going to do what to both sides? Still got this, Hazi? Is it divide? Divide by two. two. And what do you get? X is equal to? Divide eight by two, divide six by two. 43. 43. There it is. And again, not 43 degrees, because technically the degrees are already taken care of. It's just 43. Boom. All right. There's our notes. Um, Mr. Sundell, you haven't put up the homework yet. Ooh, shoot. Okay. I will go do that. Um, give me a quick fist of five, and then I'll go put up the homework. Um, find angles and congruent triangles. Boom. And also find angles and isosceles triangles. Four, four, five, five, four, five, five, five. And we're done. All right. Thank you.